Today we're going to talk about the five basics of backpacking. So how does one come up with the five basics of backpacking? Well, if you ask five backpackers, you're probably going to get five different answers. But for me, in my opinion, this is what I came up with. Planning, hiking, camp slash gear, food slash water, and fun. So let's start with planning. So number one, planning. Let's get that out of the way quick. I don't do well at talking about things I'm not passionate about, and I'll be honest, I don't like the planning part. But my best advice, research, research, research. Apps like All Trails, Gaia, paper maps from National Geographic and such, uh, atlases, whatever it may be that you can find trails, do your research, paying close attention to things like what are the water sources, are there flat places to camp, uh, are there Sasquatch or Grizzly Bear? There's a lot of things to consider. But research, we're all capable of doing that. So do it well. Number two, hiking. Here's a good reason to do it. Let's talk about uh, maybe the parameters of it. Someplace a little quieter. So hiking, I mean, that's kind of the point, right? That's why we carry all the stuff on our backs is so we can get out there a little bit further and see things that we've never seen before. At any rate, there's no status quo for how much you need to hike to be a backpacker. I'll do anything from two to 15 miles. I'm not one of those marathon backpackers, by the way. But like anything else, the hiking part is on a spectrum. How much uh, hiking do you like to do versus how much hanging out at camp? I'd probably say I'm more like a 60-40. But in order to be a backpacker, I guess your main motivation really just needs to be to get out a little farther than you have before. That's hiking. So as far as gear and camp goes, it is food, water, and shelter, just like anything else in life. So what you want to consider, uh, starting with food, is to keep things as light as possible and as calorie dense as possible. So you want to find a nice balance between things that are palatable to your uh, stomach and uh, something that isn't too heavy weight. Uh, there's a lot of dehydrated meal options out there. I'll show you what I'm cooking tonight, or maybe tomorrow night. and. We'll kind of talk about it as I eat. Water filtering uh, is quite simple if you just learn some basics. And I'll show you a little later when I filter the bag of water I scooped up earlier. Finally, shelter. Uh, there's two options basically. Well, really three if you're hardcore. A hammock, a tent, or perhaps just a tarp. And I guess a fourth would be cowboy camping under the stars. I generally sleep in a hammock and uh, I do have some tents too, no matter what. Make sure that you try some things out before you invest a lot of money in one system or the other. So we haven't talked a lot about gear. And bottom line, gear is really personal. But if you're looking for a good kind of starter weight, I guess, I would say anything under 30 pounds. My first backpacking trip, I was well over 40 with an 85 liter backpack. And it wasn't very fun, which is a good transition to fun. But bottom line, Figure out what you like, invest some money once you do, and get yourself down into uh, lighter weights each time you make a purchase. Right now, my back with food and water for two days is 22 pounds. So I have uh, really figured out what I liked and over the years uh, purchased the gear that I want. So food on trail, this happens to be a classic backpacker meal, uh, dehydrated food that is, uh, by a company called ReadyWise. Some of my favorites are uh, probably Peak Refuel, uh, Packet Gourmet, and what else? There's another one I really like. ReadyWise, I had spicy Asian noodles and chicken fettuccine. I have some more food at home that I'll be doing in future videos. It's really, really good. I like it when the meat actually tastes like it's supposed to taste, even though it's been dehydrated and rehydrated. 
But in case you don't feel like spending the money it requires to eat these, plus this is two and a half servings, which is way too much for me. You can bring things like ramen noodles, tuna packets, tortillas and peanut butter, good old fashioned gorp, good old raisins and peanuts, that's what that stands for. Um, nuts, things that are not only something appetizing to you, but something that uh, has a lot of uh, calories to weight ratio. So you probably already noticed that I'm close to a river and a lake. And here I am in a tire track on trail. Uh, but this water's running and it's very cold and the lake and the river have cliff sides so it's really dangerous to get to especially when you're hiking solo so this should be a clean water source it's very clear uh, so I'm gonna scoop some out of here carefully Now if I get pink eye, you'll know I made a bad choice. So I'm pretty sure I'm right. I'll fact check this. But that I believe is poison ivy. I don't know if you can see on camera, but it's leaves of three. It's got a little shine to it. So there's a lot of levels of fun out here. Seeing all this beauty is the obvious one. But there's a certain uh, self-confidence boosting thing with solo hiking. And when you're out with other people, there's a really friendly camaraderie amongst almost all the backpackers I've ever met. So there's limitless fun. Um, some people carry out vices and different types of things. Weed, booze, cigarettes, uh, ribeye steaks. It all really depends on what your idea of fun is, but bringing it into the backcountry and doing all those things in a place like this, you can't beat it. And of course, all of these five basics cross over into one another. The gear is fun. The gadgets are fun. The hiking is fun. The food is even fun. Really, everything about backpacking, to me anyway, is fun. So that's really all for today. Thanks for joining us at Backpacking with Buckley. If you haven't, give it a thumbs up. Try that subscribe thing. It's free to you. We'll see you soon.